So my name is Christy Bandy, and I'm the director of the Prescott YMCA Childcare. And we are currently um, taking care of emergency child care. Um, the governor of Arizona, um, Ducey, called the YMCA in, the, in Phoenix in the Valley of the Sun and said, please take care of our essential workers and the people in the hospitals and on the front lines. Tell me a bit about who you're serving then. Uh, what kinds of professions? Tick them off of the parents. We have a lot of hospital employees. Um, we have um, medical nurses, um, some people that work in restaurants that are doing curbside. Um, we have some families that have home businesses um, and children being home, you know, all week is hard for them. Um, the program is significantly grown in the last week as Ducey's announced some openings of um, salons. And so we have some um, employees that are going back, you know, in the next few days or so. How has that impacted your program and your, I'm thinking particularly the teachers? Well, it's different because um, children are being all meshed together from the schools that closed. So um, I have a few children from different centers around, you know, Prescott and Prescott Valley and Chino. And so their, their personalities are all coming together. And so we're learning together what their needs are, what their social emotional needs are. And then at the same time, social distancing. So um, it, 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 it's tricky. Every week it gets easier. Uh, when I was in the classroom, learning who's, you know, who works with what child and what their personalities are and what their needs are um, and kind of breaking the, that, the eggshell, you know, the crust and getting through to them and letting them know that we do care and that we're here for them. So. And what are the ages of the children that you serve? We serve um, two year old and toilet trained through 12. So sometimes, um, well, let me back up. If you're going to bring a two-year-old to a new child care center, there's usually some sort of orientation, preparation. Are these children getting any of that, or is it just can't, can't be done right now? It just can't be done right now. I have a family that wants to come back, and they want to do a trial, and we just, we just can't. Um, parents are dropping off at the front door. We're doing all that we can to prepare the children, um, we, you know, of course we talked with the parents and let them know what it would look like. The two year olds that we have had, that we have, they are, um, I don't think all two year olds could do it. The two year olds we have, the parents knew that they could do it. Um, but it's been a challenge. It has, but we're getting to know them and, um, trying to combine them with other children that can help them, uh, learn the, the program and learn, you know. What do we do when we go out to go to the bathroom and, and where is the bathroom and where's the gates to the playground? So that was a challenge. We're, we're growing the program more with older children right now. Um, we opened up with three classrooms. We moved to five and now on Monday we'll move to six. Um, so, yeah. I'm just I'm wondering if the general public understands that because you have a slot here and then that closes, but there's a slot over here and you could just go drop your child off here. It's not that easy for the child, is it? It's not, it's not. We've been doing a lot of conversations. The first week, it was maybe day three, I had a child that looked at me and she was kind of, she was like, I want my mom. And I said, well, she's coming tonight. You can't stay here. You can't spend the night. She will come get you. And she goes, but I just want my school. And with, I just looked at her and I was like, baby, I get it. Me too, I want my school back. Um, and consequently her school is opening up next week and she gets to go back. Um, and so I just feel like it's something that we needed to do. It's important um, what we're doing. And as all these other schools are closed, parents need to work. So we're kind of just like, you know, coming together and helping them and doing what we can to support them um, during this, you know, this time of, of pandemic and having, um, so I guess we're trying to build our, 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 new, our new school. I had a, I had a mom that um, she is, her, her, he's now three, but when he says things like, 
but this isn't like school. Why can't you come in? And they are calling it weird preschool. That's their word for it right now. So it's weird preschool, but it's kind of sweet that we can all talk about it. Like, yeah, this isn't normal, but it's, it's still, we're together and we're working together and um, building our, our, our current state of what's normal. So it is starting to feel normal, even though it's not um, because we've been doing it for a while. And I'm, actually surprised at how well they're doing the ratios are really are really low and the parents i think at home are so appreciative of it they're they, when they drop off they're like thank you so much and um there's this sense of community that we're doing even though it's not our normal community does that make sense yes it does make sense mm -hmm. what do you think the public should know about what you're doing um i think I think they do know it's on our, you know, our bill, our billboard. Um, um, but I think they should know that this is hard work and it's important work. It's holy work. You know what I mean? Um, because I had to kind of wrap my brain around it that I know I'm an essential worker, but I almost had to look at my staff and say, they are as important right now as the doctors that are in the hospital taking care of people with, with the, the virus and that um, this is extremely essential for us to get back to where we were. Do you think the general public understands that you are an essential worker? I'm not seeing I, I, that in the list of professions that tick off about who's out there working really hard. Yeah. Some of those institutional advertisements. Yeah. Well, early educators aren't being offered free coffee or early hours at Costco. We're not. Um, but that's okay. Um, I think that in, in any community, when you do this, there's going to be people that say, you know, that's really important. That's great. You know, yay for you. And there's other people that say those kids should all be home, you know? So I don't know. I don't know what they'll say, but I know what we've done has been very important. Do you think it's going to change anything for the future when, things get back to normal if they ever do? Well, I, I think so. Well, it, whether it'll stick like 9-11, we all, you know, pulled together and we all appreciated each other more. Um, I know that for myself and my family, um, taking things for granted and, and appreciation are going to look different. So I think, oh. I think, I think it will change. So why did you decide to go into this profession in the first place? Um, I think it was what I was supposed to do. Um, I fell into it and then um, went to school, had my kids at my centers, and it's just who I am. Um, I love working with teachers and families and children. It's just who I am. 